are these people? Um, so, um, so I was just over the weekend, I was just kind of doing what I typically do and just kind of binge watch clips on YouTube. And I've listened to this before, but I think I kind of stumbled across it again. Um, listening to Kwame Toure, formerly known as Stokely Carmar Carmichael. Those of you who don't know, basically he was a black activist, very active in the, the progressive movement um, uh -huh. during the civil rights movement. Uh, you could say he's almost kind of a contemporary to John Lewis, actually. Um, so, um, so here, I'm not sure what year this clip was taken from. My guess is probably the 90s, both of these clips. Um, but I found this clip, and actually I probably might save this on my channel um, at a later point. Mm. Um, but he talks about um, the African bourgeoisie and the class struggle. Uh, and as I said, you know, like we've been having a lot of talks, I think on the left I, with certain uh, personalities who talk about how we should focus on class versus party. And so I wanted to play this because I think number one, we don't hear much of Kwame Ture a lot, if ever, uh, but I wanted to kind of play this just to give his, to hear his perspective on um, what he deems as um, is necessary, you know, given, as he says, the African bourgeoisie, but if you can replace African with American and it still mm. pretty much applies, um, but what he says regarding uh, the class struggle in general, so. But our struggle since the 60s, you will see nothing but betrayals by the petty bourgeois elements in our society. The African bourgeoisie is the most corrupt bourgeoisie in the world. In Africa, they seek luxury in the midst of mass suffering. There are more Mercedes in Africa than in any other continent in the world. In America, as soon as they arrive at a position based on this blood of the people, they snatch that position and run away from the people. But you must not think that they represent the people. They only represent their opportunistic self using the people every step of the way. So you must not be confused. It must be clear then for the 60s, the class struggle in the African revolution must be more ruthless and uncompromising than in any other revolution. Here yeah, then the masses must come without pity and without mercy to trample upon these reactionary pigs who after the people have gained struggle through their blood come to hand back the gains on a silver platter to the very enemy the people fought. This will come as a natural consequence. The people themselves are everywhere screaming that it's time for them to deal with these reactionary pigs. Even in America they say our leaders must be held accountable. They're only saying here that these people must be accountable to those who made it possible for them to get there. Thus, not only is the revolution inevitable, but it is clarifying itself and it is qualifying itself. For the African masses everywhere, the clear poise position now for class struggle has become inevitable and irreversible. The petty bourgeoisie everywhere will be running for cover, but the masses will spare them not. Consequently, we, who have dedicated our lives to the people's struggle, we, who knowing that the people will always be free, we, understanding that we must make a contribution to qualify our struggle since the 60s, have been, have been dedicating all our energies to only one task, the organization of the masses of our people. The organization of the masses of our people. We are not running for mayor, we're not running for president. No changes can come from the top down, we're not stupid. Changes can only come from the bottom up. The masses and the masses alone can make them. If you want to learn something from the 60s, the lesson is simple. Organize the masses of the people. Thank you. Thank you I mean, this was talked about in the 90s. Yeah. So, and we're still talking about this now. <laughs> um, any yep. thoughts, Ricky or Reef, regarding what Brother Kwame said or anything that stuck out to you? I see Ricky's gears turning. Go ahead, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's 100% correct. Uh, and this is what some of us keep chirping. Uh, while the other ones want to, you know, kiss the butts of everyone in Congress. Uh, 
you know, yeah, we have to we have to deal with Congress because they exist and they are the legislators. However, uh, oh man, RIP, what a brilliant mind. Um, but people got to get out there, and you know, it's not going to be pretty, you know. But if, what I've noticed, man, activists like the people I've worked with, that we are not. Cap- I don't know if we're even capable anymore. Um, yeah. I've seen so many people just, you know, there's just some some groups altogether that will not uh, criticize anyone in a, in a you know in a, a position of power or uh, in a position of power on their side of the aisle or you know what have you. Uh, and then I see other people that just like they get into activism and it's all emotion. It's all like, oh, my feelings, or I don't, I'm not being heard. It's like, it's a fight. We're fighting. We're fighting power. Like, I've never, I can't, I can't understand how you get into activism and you come in and you pearl clutch. Like, there's just no, there's just no room for that. We're here to fight power. Like, yeah. if you're, if you, and I hate to be this guy, but like, there needs to be people with backbones in this movement, mm-hmm. any, any movement for that matter, whether it's, you know, healthcare, climate insert whatever issue is important to you but like there's there's a lack of backbone you know well the Uh, fact that they won't they won't ask like we're done asking all of us are done asking bro we're now demanding we're in the streets we're here and we constantly get pushback from like you know every you know pearl clutching uh, like person out there that's like well why are you doing this why are you doing that why aren't you doing this and it's like well what else are we going to do? Nothing else has worked. Voting hasn't worked clearly. Like, yeah. you know, you can't, you can't get the people you have already elected to do the thing that they set out to elect themselves to do. Like that's what are yeah, we doing? Are, Those are the people you should are, criticize right now. Yeah. Like, these people are obsessed with, with being comfortable and, and for things to be convenient. And the thing is they've, they're just waiting. They're just riding this out. And it's getting worse and worse and worse. And it, they refuse to make the move. So they're really waiting until we're past the point of no return. And that's, yeah. it's really going to be too late. Then. It's already kind of too late now, but it's going to be really, really too late by the time these pearl clutchers wake up and, and start saying, oh, it looks like uh, these powerful people have robbed not only the poor people, but robbed the entire planet of everything. It's resources. It's, it's, uh, you know, it's life. Like this planet is dying in so many different ways and the people on it, it's, it's really bad. Um, yep. But people are just too comfortable in America, go to France and they're like pouring shit on like the president's house right. or something like it's, it's like wild over there. They're like punching yeah. people. Like good but, you know, but you know what, Ricky, I think you're going to a good point. And actually I'm kind of glad you're here because you've actually have engaged in activism. I think, especially with the marches for Medicare for all last year. And again, this summer, um, I think our big problem is on the left. I f- we do a very good job of mobilizing people. You know, we're good at kind of bringing people together. I think one thing, and I don't want to make this sound like I'm bashing like you or anybody else, you know, especially who are doing this work. Um, but I think something that I we need to kind of be mindful of and continue to work on is the organizing part, meaning like, what is the strategy in order to get the things that we want? You know, yeah. what is the roadmap in order to get from point A to point B? And how can, we... so I think we're very good at gathering people around the issues. That I don't think is too much of a problem. I think there's, I think especially in this day and age and given the fuckery that's happening in this country in particular, I think there's a lot of buy-in for issues like Medicare for all, like a livable wage and all of that. The question that we need to now, like, okay, now you have, um, now you have people's attention, you know, how can we get to the point of what is, what are the steps that we need to get in order to ensure that we get there? You know, I think people do think, you know, like, and, th- and this is kind of why I kind of get frustrated, you know, in terms of like think people thinking, you know, like a one day strike or just strike for like a few hours and then it's just over and done with 
and you go home. No, like that can be part of it, but it has to be a part of a comprehensive plan as far mm -hmm. as, you know, like mutual aid, you know, like um, specific targeted, you know, direct action at certain places or whatever, you know, having to basically kind of be a disruption, you know, to the establishment. And I don't think, I know you, Ricky, are very committed to that, but I think others are not necessarily so. Like, they're not necessarily thinking of the long term as far as, and the detailed work that it, order, it, it needs in order to push for certain things. Like, as Kwame Ture said, we have to be relentless and uncompromising. And it's like, the idea of being like, these are the things that we stand for and we and and nothing else. And I think part of it is, you know, you have people who claim to be on the left who kind of infiltrate and kind of, you know, muddy the waters a little bit that people like either second guess, or as you said, Ricky, you know, go by emotions, you know, and like take it personally, that they kind of lose the focus or the vision of what they're supposed to do, and then they kind of drop off. And so I think generally we need to do a lot better in being like, what do we stand for and what are we not going to tolerate? And how can we get to the things that we want and not be relentless and, uh, and uncompromising in those values? Yeah. Well, like I've, I've noticed that almost all the activists are like burnt out pretty much. Like yeah. all the ones who've been in it for a missed minute, like, and pick, pick a subject, whether it's Assange, whether it's Medicare for all, or I mean, literally pick an issue. Almost all the activists are just done. They're tired. They're exhausted. Like they've been in it for so long years at this point, you know, and they're just waiting for the fresh bodies to show up. Like, you know, that's pretty much it. We're all just kind of waiting right now, you know, 100%. so, so what what caught like what what forces change is is these sustained actions whatever they might be in whatever form they come in it doesn't really matter it's not really rocket science it's really it's really just having the reinforcements and having the long sustained actions uh, we can we can look just as far as last year or earlier this year really uh we can look at the the trucker convoys yep you know it's really interesting because when the people who who fight for for progressive legislation don't have this kind of drive or oomph behind them at all. But when people don't want something to happen, boy, it's really easy to organize people. When they don't want something to happen, they show up. And yeah, oftentimes it is a right a, a more right leaning movement. They do because they don't sit around talking about their emotions. Right. They don't get caught up in, oh, what, how are you feeling about this? They, right. I'm pissed off. I do not want this. Let's go do a thing. It might be sloppy. We might get called names and slandered and, and, and everything else. But yeah. guess what? They had hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people supporting them worldwide. Right. 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 Yeah. You're Regardless right. of, of your, your stance on the whole topic, I don't even care. They changed something they went out there and they did it they changed the world they definitely changed the whole topic they changed the trajectory of this whole this whole covid nightmare of the past two years they really did um yeah. and that's what it takes and that just was spur of the moment that was inspired by real life that was happening and they said you know what enough is enough enough of them got together and just did the thing thing is like it could be done for any of this it could be done for passing legislation but unfortunately, uh, you have you have a lot of people who who divide and conquer themselves. Uh, we're seeing that in the healthcare thing. It's like, well, let's let's go fight in fifty different states for fifty different healthcare plans, and most states can't afford it and don't have ballot initiatives. And it's like, okay, guys, if we all just stormed DC and said healthcare, 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 and then we did this constantly, it would change things. Yeah. You know, I think and, it's just, I think it's just a phrasing. As long as you don't say storm. You do something like a hug in, right? You do like a hug in and then we'll right. be, it'll all be fine. You know? Yeah, but, but no, but no, it's time to stop being, it's, stop, it's, time, it's time to stop pussyfooting around. Like if you want shit, go get shit and stop, right. and stop. It, yeah, storm DC, storm DC, descend on DC, yeah. cause a ruckus. Where's, where's AOC, eh? 
she ain't nowhere to be found. Pussy. So, so, <laughs> <laughs> so we're, we are going to, we are going to turn things up a little bit with March Medicare for all. We have the, the, the March rally on Saturday, which is going to be kind of a come one, come all as, as many people as possible event uh, Saturday, July 30th, but in the days leading up, I'm going to be there a few days early. We're going to like do some shit around DC. We're going to be like, you know, maybe chalking up, you know, buildings and, and sidewalks and like, like maybe putting things on statues. Glow we stick might be rave, hanging. You know we what I'm saying? Hang, we might hang <laughs> banners. We might we might uh, cause a ruckus on Capitol Hill. We might be doing a lot of things to like stir the pot a little bit. And, mm. it's gonna, it's, and that's going to interest us. Like, last year, we did 56 actions and, and exploded onto the scene. It's, it wasn't controversial, but it, it like, you know, that's that was our introduction to the world. Hello, here, here we are. Now it's time that we have to turn up the heat, right? right. And it's really hard. You're not going to like you can't sit here and worry about like, oh, can we get the endorsement of this organization? Because they're all useless. They're all yeah. <laughs> I hate to be I hate to be that guy. But if I can sit here and email DSA for months and then like, well, let's send it up the chain and see if, it, you know, we'll, we'll send it to that committee and that committee. And they'll say no, because it's all bureaucratic. It's all gatekeeping. Right. So you have to say, fuck DSA, fuck our revolution. Uh, all they want to do is pro- protect, you know, the progressives, which means absolutely nothing because they're not actually giving us health care so hmm. what we have to do is just get out there and cause a ruckus and then like that's what's going to really put the, the heat on, on on the progressives is that like oh are you supporting the grassroots activists that are, are fighting tooth and nail or are you just sitting back and watching them do it that's gonna make them look bad so yeah so you have so if you want to this other video from uh kwame correct yes so continuing on my stream of consciousness mm. uh so kwame talked about you know um the class struggle and then that's in turn when I started thinking more in terms of like how the class struggle relates to organization so this is our second club of family it's short yeah it's short so um so if you want to play that read actually I let me do it let me do it let me do it let me do it go ahead see if it works see if you could do it you will not stop yes. We have told you it's a fact if you look at history, I have known no great man or no great woman that didn't belong to an organization, not one. The American capitalist system was so confused, some of us, that we will actually think that we by ourselves can lead the people to their freedom. There's no such thing as Rambo or Superman, it exists only in Hollywood. Fidel Castro, as bad as he is, he needs a communist party of Cuba to help direct Cuba. B.I. Lenin, as rough as he is, he needed a Bolshevik party. Karl Marx was a great man, had to organize the International Working Men's Association. The Honorable Marcus Garvey saw Claire and Long, but he needed the Universal Negro Improvement Association of the African Community Leagues. Patrice Lumumba was a great man, he needed organization. Harriet Tubman was a rough sister, she needed organization. Rosa Parks sat down so we can get up. She needed organization. Malcolm X so loved organization that when he left the Nation of Islam, he created two organizations, the Muslim Mosque Incorporated for Muslims and the African American Organization spotted after the, uh, Afri- the Organization of African Unity. Everywhere you will see the need for organization. Martin Luther King was a righteous man, but even he recognized the need for the Southern Christian Egypt Conference. And while Nelson Mandela, Nelson Mandela is known all over the world, he still has the African National Congress. Every brother or sister who truly seeks to advance the world must belong to an organization. This we will not stop telling you. Yeah. So I don't think we think about that too much. Honestly, I don't think about that that much. But the saying is, you know, like behind every man is a great woman. I think we need to be saying behind every politician is a great organizational arm that they're connected to, you yeah. know? And I think I shared this with you, Reef, last night and in the, you know, as we were prepping, I think really moving forward, you know, we should be asking our politicians, anyone who's considering running for office, who is the organization that's backing you? Yeah. You know, um, because I think that will kind of tell us a lot as far as what their values are and who are they really for. So I never honestly thought about that until I watched this clip, but you know, the idea like most, pretty much every major movement that has happened in this country and in history 
has always stemmed from the idea of an organization, good or bad, or in between backing that person or people. So. Mm -hmm.